So my hope is that I'm going to be able to present sort of an opinionated way about how I think this works. And then Ali's going to be able to really unpack the meat of how this works uh, from a technology perspective. So first, I'm just going to give everybody a quick intro into what CTO.ai is. I'm the founder and CEO of CTO.ai. It's my second startup. Um, I'm a self-taught high school dropout, taught myself how to program to build businesses. I started out early in the shared hosting days and have spent as much time on the front end as the back end. So as I think about DevOps, as I think about the developer experience, I think a lot about how to help people save time and make things intuitive. Um, and this is what I think DevOps looks like. And you know, this isn't really that specific to the Python community, but you guys, everybody in this community has to tackle uh, some sort of DevOps these days because cloud is sort of at the center of our computes. And as a result, I think there's about 300 billion loss in developer productivity, according to Stripe Coefficient. The reason for this is that we all know in the companies that we work in or in the practices that we do, um, it's important to automate your workflow, but it's also too expensive and time consuming. And this is because a lot of the tools that we adopt, whether it's through the open source realm or cloud providers, um, they can feel like a snake swallowing an elephant. They're obviously really powerful tools, but they take a lot of time to master. Um, what's even more complicated is over time, you have to adopt a lot of these tools, implement processes as your team grows, and you have this negative correlation between the process and the people that creates inefficiency within any kind of workflow. So we created this thing called CTO.ai, uh, we call it the Ops Platform, and it enables development teams to easily automate tools, uh, but also gain intelligence that they can then use to analyze their workflows. We do this with something that we call Ops. They're basically like a Docker container that we've really simplified you essentially build this CLI type experience and then it runs everywhere. It runs from the CLI, it runs in Slack. You can even plug it into your CI CD server. We think that this is the easiest way to create a 10X engineering team. And when I say that, I mean one person who enables five people to be uh, two times more productive because you've streamlined the work that they're doing. And when you do that, you have a sustainment of velocity in any workflow that you have. So that's sort of the context that I wanted to set. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump into a, a live demo here. What I have on the left-hand side here is uh, a Slack channel in our ops community. So the ops community is a place where we invite people to come who care about automating workflows and care about automating the developer experience. We've installed our Slack ops bot into this channel and I've associated it with a team. So you can see here all the commands that are available. These commands are both available to me here on the command line, but they're also available to me here in Slack. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick off a workflow and this workflow is basically a Jupyter workflow. What it's gonna do is it's gonna spin up a Kubernetes cluster on top of ECS um, and it's gonna deploy a Jupyter runtime there so that I can actually open up my um, Jupyter workbook and start doing some Python type stuff. So at the end of the day, what I wanna do here, the point of the ops platform is to get me to that goal of um, automating something as quickly as possible. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just going through the workflow this workflow also runs in the CLI, but I'm just selecting the options. Um, I want this Kubernetes cluster deployed in US East 1. I'm going to pick the workbook style, the workbook uh, deployment that I want, which is I'm going to go with a minimal deployment because we don't have to all day to sit here and watch this download. So while this is running on the left-hand side, creating that cluster on AWS, I'm going to actually walk you through the idea of creating an op. So I'm just going to initialize an op here with the CLI. Of course, I'll pick the Python SDK. Uh, we'll go with SF Python as the name, a demo for SF Python version 0 0.1. Okay, so what we see here is we scaffold out some code. The three files that really matter here are the Docker file. Pretty plain and simple. You use a base image that we provide, and that way we make sure that your, your runtime requirements are all there. Then you add your user code in. We have this special little thing that we have called an OpsYML. Think of it kind of like a Docker manifest, but essentially what I've done is I've defined a command here, and that's a command that I want to be able to run within my workflow. And then the last thing is actually the, uh, the Python code itself. So let's just take a look at that. Um, and it's some pretty simple Python code. Uh, maybe I'll just open it up real quick uh, because we have everything still deploying on the other side. Just give it a little customization, SF Python, sure. Boom. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ops run SF Python and I'm gonna pass dash B because I want it to build a container. It's gonna interact with my local Docker container. It's gonna build it and it's gonna give me this sort of interactive prompt. How are you doing today, SF Python? We'll just answer great and the workflow will finish. So now that that's done, I've essentially built this workflow and I can ops publish it. And once I publish it, if I can type, it will then be published to the CTO.ai registry and it'll be available to my whole team, anybody who's added to this SF Python team. 
but it'll also be if I made it public, available on the public registry so other people can share these workflows. So I'll just say here a demo. And this is gonna start syncing that Docker container behind the scenes to the CTO.ai container registry. It's gonna set up the roles and permissions so that other people on my team can interface with this workflow. And if I wanted to change essentially the, um, make it available to the whole community, I just have to change this public false to public true. And that would determine that it's now uh, a public registry and it would be available both on our website, but through this op search command. Anyone would be able to run any one of these workflows directly from our public registry. So now that that's synchronized up, I'm just gonna wait a second here while the um, Jupyter Labs instance blows up um, or starts up. And if there's any questions, um, I certainly can answer those. So I'll just switch back over, make the window full screen. Okay, hopefully this is all big enough for people to see. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create another channel real quick while the Jupyter Labs instance is starting up. We'll call it, you know, temp, something like that. Uh, I'll come in here and I'll just associate my other team to it. And I'm just gonna show you running this um, ops team switch. I'm just gonna show you running the workflow that I just built. So if I just switch to the demo team, it's now available. Ops list, I'll see the workflow that I just published, SF Python. If I ops run SF Python, it will download that container and run it on our remote Kubernetes environment. And I should get the exact same interaction I same on seen on Slack. And uh, then I'll switch back to the SF Python workflow and hopefully it's done spinning up my Kubernetes cluster for that workbook. Answer that, great. And then the workflow will complete. So the core value proposition of what we're trying to create is make it super easy for you to containerize your Python scripts, your Python environment, and essentially make it accessible and instantly accessible. We also have a number of features um, in the CLI, things like secret management, um, configs. We also have events um, where you can track events in your workflow, as I said, and run data science. So here you see the, the workflow is finished. And if I just look through it here, it's created the EC2 or the sort of ECS cluster, which is a Kubernetes cluster. You can see that it's uh, set up security groups, created ingresses, booted up the Jupyter Labs instance. I'll click here and what you'll note is this term secret. So what's happening here is it's pulling this secret from our secret store. That's an environment variable that I've registered in a vault. And the system's smart enough not to leak that secret. It knows that that secret is sensitive so it won't actually um, show it within Slack. So now that I hit here, let me see if I can just remember what the password was. I think it was... Uh, this, boom, I now have a workbook. Um, and that's how easy it is to get a scalable Jupyter workbook running on a Kubernetes cluster in ECS that comes with whatever pre-built things you want. Um, and like I said, I'm not a, uh, I'm not what I would call a Python master, but let's just make sure this works. Boom, five. So there you go, Jupyter Playbook in um, about five to 10 minutes.